Andre. All right. Okay, welcome every everybody. Today is day two of our boot camp, and oh. we're going to be learning. Please, I'll appreciate if everybody's mic is mute to avoid plenty, plenty noise in the background. All right. So I'll just try and unmute everybody, but please don't unmute yourself unless you want to speak. And even if you want to say something, use the chat box. I'm always going to be checking it. Oh, great, Mrs. Echo. Okay, you applied for the Prince Edward Island Job Fair. Excellent. Great job, my great job. Great job. All right, let's proceed. Today, we're going to be learning how to create a standard CV, an international standard CV. But before we dive into it, I will want to, first of all, make us understand how these things work, right? So before now, we will just create CV, print it out as hard copy. Anywhere you hear they are doing, there is vacancy, you just go there, pack and submit. You can practically print like 20 CVs, you know, and just carry it and go and be submitting. Um, thank you for starting your training with Alison. Great job. So normally you just carry your CV, drop it here, go to the next office, drop it there, go to the next office, drop it there. That's the typical way all of us know how to, you know, spread our CVs, okay? In as much as it worked for some people then, it does not work anymore. That strategy is gone. It is now an a cake strategy. So most of the jobs now, you're applying online, basically. These are international jobs. You're not abroad. You're in Nigeria or you're somewhere out of your dream destination. So most of the applications we done online, okay? So whenever you submit your CV, when you maybe you I applied online, you click the submit button or... Um, they sent an email and they said submit your email um, your CV to this email you submit. Most of the organizations, maybe not all, but 90% of them, once you submit your CV, the person that receives that CV is not a human being. Okay? The first person that sees your CV is not human. B before now, it's the HR department. Okay? HR will receive your CV, you're sending your CV to HR at blah, 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 dot com. But now it's no longer HR. It is what we call ATS. It is a robot that uses artificial intelligence. This is a robot. It does not have the, the intelligence. I, I mean, it's called artificial intelligence, but it does not have human intelligence. So it can only think and act like a robot. And how does robots work? Garbage in garbage out. So a human gives an ATS instruction and says, I'm looking for one, one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten things in somebody's CV. If you submit your CV and this ATS does not see those ten things that a human being has given to it, automatically you receive an email response that says, unfortunately, you are not qualified for this job. It is not the HR department that sent you that mail. It's an ATS. It's a robot that sent you that mail. So an ATS, which the full meaning is um, application tracking system, right? I hope I'm right with that. Application tracking system, that's what it is. So it basically tracks what the HR unit has told it to look for in your CV. And if it doesn't see it, you'll not go to the next level. So let's say you have gotten the tricks of by cutting this level. The next thing is now the HR unit. So it is not all CVs that pass through the ATS. Some of them will bounce back and go back to you as an unfortunate email. So the next is the HR unit. The HR unit will receive your CV and apply what is called the six seconds rule. All right. What is the six seconds rule? It simply means once I have received your application, I have, once I've received your CV, in six seconds, in six seconds, I should be able to find what I am looking for 
in six seconds, there should be something catchy about your CV that applies to, you know, what the role is asking for. So this is very important for you to understand while we are creating our CV. So now, what is ATS looking for? We call them keywords. ATS are looking for keywords, all right? So, for example, I'm just going to give this one example. When we start drafting the CV, you will understand better. Let's say they are looking for um, a caregiver that has an, that knows how to speak English. But the way the job requirement stated it, it stated it as um, looking for a vibrant candidate that has excellent English communication skills, right? Let me reduce this font size so that we get the picture. I hope you guys are seeing my screen, oh. Excellent. You're seeing my screen, B. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, ma'am. So, yes, the, yes. thank you. So the job description of that job advert you saw says we are looking for somebody with excellent English communication skills. But on your own CV, what we have there is, um, let's say, good English. Good English. Good English or something. Oh, no, 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 no. Let me use the thing we like to always use. Effective communication. I'm looking for two words that does not even have similarities. Effective communication. Communication skills. Effective communication skills. I'm trying to use things that does not have communication skills. What are those things you will use on your CV that shows that you know how to speak English? That is not any of these two. Effective, excellent English communication skill, effective. Anyway, the job says excellent English communication. Your own CV says these communication skills match. I want something that does not match. Effective, okay, spoken English, for example. For, I'm just giving an example. Oh. Now, excellent English communication skills and effective spoken English. Fluent in English, eloquence. God bless all these English people. You see why it is good to go to school like this. Okay, eloquence in English. So you now used all those English. All of them means the same thing. But this other ATS does not have sense to be able to discern that all these things means the same. The key words that they have fed to this ATS is excellent English communication skills. So if you want to submit application to this company that you saw excellent English communication skills in their job description or the kind of things they are looking out for, you that have effective spoken English or fluent in English speaking and all that, you will come and change this effective to this excellent. You must use this same English. This is what you put on your CV. So that is why you cannot use one CV to apply for 100 jobs. Because... Somebody else will not use excellent English communication. Somebody else will use fluent in English. You also will have to use fluent in English because ATS is looking for keywords. Are we together? So today we are, what we are doing is the general drafting of a standard CV, which everybody can be writing theirs as I am doing this. But whenever you want to submit an application, tailor your CV. Now, when a job does not have a job description, just like this Prince Edward uh, um, recruitment exercise that we're going through right now, they did not tell you job description, they did not tell you what they're looking for, but they are basic keywords of every job role. And this is where chat GPT comes in. Am I off? Can you guys still hear me? We can hear you very well. Oh, yes, no. Ma, we can hear you. Yes, we can. All right, great. So that's where. Yeah. 
my you guys disappeared, so I didn't know if you guys were still here. So that's where ChatGPT comes in, right? You, I'm sure some of you know what is ChatGPT. The web link to ChatGPT is is not ChatGPT.com. It's open chat.openai.com. So most of you already know what ChatGPT is, while some of you do not know. So before we go into ChatGPT, our CV has basically seven important sections, and one is optional. Number one, most important, not most important, first part of our CV is our personal data. Personal data. Now, in this personal data, we like to add things that are no longer relevant. Once upon a time, they were important. Once upon a time, we used them, but no, not anymore. So who can tell me what are the things that are that should be found in our personal data? What are the things that should be found in our personal data? Number one, under personal data, what should we have there? Name. Name, full name. Our name. Okay, what Phone name? Num contact, email address. contact. Phone number, okay. Email address. Email address. What else? Links in profile. What else? Age. Address. Address. Oh, yeah. Keep naming. What else? <laughs> <laughs> so, two years laughing. What else? Driver's Postal license. Code. Eh? Postal code. Uh, Postal code now. Postal code. Uh -huh. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Somebody email say, address email. UK driver's license your title title uh huh let's go let's go let's go then a passion name for your profession Abby. that's title yes UK driver's license hey wow well, love you like that <laughs> <laughs> okay let me put driver's license because there are Canada people also here uh, uh -huh, what else <laughs> okay let's stop there before you people start adding local government and community and all that and all that okay so um full name great your full name should be there so full name example for dinner yes. okay your phone number with your code is fine plus two three four seven zero three Excellent, excellent, extra, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That should be there. Email address, please. If your email address is sexymama for real at gmail.com, I kill for fun, I shoot you to die, uh, slay mama, hot, sexy. You know those kind of emails. I beg, no put that for your CV. Name dot surname or name and surname. Something simple, something professional. Don't go and be using and say, ah, this is the, the people that cannot hear me. What's up? Uh, why can't they hear me? That should hear me. Are you? Someone should tell them in the, com in the chat box that they should leave and come back in. So your email address must be professional, okay? Name, surname. If somebody has taken that thing, just add 0102. Something very simple and straightforward. Don't use all those sly shoot for gone, all those sexy things. Don't even use that. All right. Now, LinkedIn profile. Please, if you have, see, because of this thing I just said now, that I need to edit this video. I won't be able to post this video on YouTube with all these things I said under this email address. Oh, man, I don't have strength to edit too. LinkedIn profile. Please do not put your LinkedIn profile if your LinkedIn profile is not yet optimized. If there is nothing on your LinkedIn profile, please do not add it. Because some of us, we don't know what we are doing in our LinkedIn. We are posting pictures when we are eating in our house and doing vlogs and think that's what LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a professional platform. So if your LinkedIn profile is not optimized, I think somewhere along this bootcamp, LinkedIn optimization. But if it's not optimized, do not add it. Please, age is not necessary. That, oh. Age is not necessary under your 
personal data. Nobody cares about how old you are. So please, this is a no, no, no. Do not add age, all right? Let's move. Now, address. When it comes to address, you know those kind of streets that there is like um, number 20, St. John Street, adjacent Kilimanjaro, behind the Luzu Bridge, opposite Anglican Card Church. Please, the address is Number nine, St. John Street, Port Harcourt, Nigeria. Then your postal code, 500222. If you don't know what your postal code is, just Google it. Write postal code and write the name of your street or your city or whatever. And put your postal code there with your address. Do not put off adjacent, overneath, underneath, or above. Don't add all that. Street name, where you are, that's all postal code. I'm sure we understand that. Now, title. Remember the six seconds rule. The six seconds rule. In six seconds, your the HR unit should be able to see something catchy, something attractive. So under your title, you now put maybe two, three, four titles you have, you have, um, you are, or you have been for the past five years. So for caregivers, your title could be caregiver, you know, Caregiver slash care assistant, you know, stuff like that, slash um, ADL specialist, you know, things that you are that will catch attention of the person that is going through your profile. So those in the um, professional industry, you can use all that project manager, you know, mini, 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 add three, two, three, four titles there that will catch the attention of the person. And this title is usually right underneath the name. So after name, the next thing I'm going to have there is the title. You remember, we're not putting this title here. Or we're not writing title. We're not writing full name. It's just Bodina West, caregiver, care assistant, ADA specialist, senior care trainer, stuff like that. Okay? Gender is not necessary. They don't care if you're male if you're female, if you're cross-gender, transgender, whatever gender, they do not care about it. So do not add that under your, under your statement and driver's license. I have never seen this. This is not a personal data about you. These things are not required. Okay? So remember, LinkedIn profile should be there if your profile is optimized. If your LinkedIn profile is professional enough, but if it is not, do not shoot yourself you know, and go and put it there and expose yourself. So after personal data, do we have any question about this personal data? Any question? Any question? Yes. For those of us that don't have postal code, what should you put? Everybody has a postal code. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to prove that to you now. Okay. Um, so someone yeah. has more than one LinkedIn profile. Why? For one CV? No, no. For one CV, one... No, no, no. Like, not for the CV, but you have more than one LinkedIn profile. It, it, you can, but if LinkedIn traces it to one person, they will close all down. They will close all down. It's very risky. You're going to lose everything, and you will never be able to log in again until you change name, change email, and all that. So it's quite dangerous. But yes, you can. So what people do is, let's say you have a middle name, like Bodina Chidima West, then one will be Bodina West, the other one will be Chidima West, something like that. But if LinkedIn should find out you have more than one profile and it's the same person, they're going to shut it down. Okay? So who said, what if you don't have postal code? Can you can you see my screen showing Google search? What can you guys see now on my screen? Just... Personal um, data. Just the personal data. Personal data, what's in our schedule. That's what you're still saying. Okay, let me make sure that my screen and sharing that I'm out to this one. Okay, I'm sure I've seen something else now, right? Yes. yes. Okay, now, so what is your... um The lady that said, what if you don't have... uh What's it called? Postal code. What's your address? Where do you live? Benin City. 
Okay. Um, where in Benin? Street name. Just street. Jesus Christ Street. Jesus Christ Street. Are you serious or you're joking? <laughs> Is that a joke? Jesus Christ is Benin City. Is that really the name of a street? I'm just seeing your back. Is... Yeah, it is. Off or pass on Bar Road. Oh, all right. So see your postal code. Um, 30211. Okay, so everybody has a postal code. There is nobody without a postal code. 30211. But if you open the Benin City postal code, you know, you can now check the list and check the streets. That is closer to you. Every, as long as you have a street name, you have a postal code. So this Benin City postal code, um, that's it. So I don't know. Like, I think everybody in Benin is 300 to 1. Okay, it changes somewhere. So you have to go through it, look for the street that is closest to your street or your own street name. And yes, your postal code is there. So everybody has a postal code. Any other question? Sorry, please. Um, Can you hear me? Of course. Okay, um, please, I, I came in late and I'm really sorry about that. Don't mean to drag you back. But is this um CV for Canada or for UK? It it, it serves for both. For both, okay. It okay. serves for both. The difference is not so much. And while I go through it, we will talk about that. Yeah? Thank you very much. Yeah, excellent. Any other question, please? Yes, ma'am. Um, Do we necessarily have to put our postal code? Yes. Okay. It's just a, a proper um, way to have your address. Addresses are not complete without a postal code, right? So it's just a professional way okay. of writing your address. It's not like it must be, it must be, it must be, but without it, your address is not complete in quotes, right? Okay, ma'am. Yeah. So yeah. um, for the address, let's assume um, I stay in number 13, Dollar Street. Do I have to put it like that? Yes, number thirteen dollar street, the name of the state and the postal code. Where is dollar street? Number okay. thirteen dollar street. Where is dollar street? What state? States. No, that was an example, not my actual street. Oh, she's trying to tell you the full the full way to put it. Okay, okay. So River State, for example, you know, 500 to one two, something like that. And that ends it. So there's no need for Dollar Street, opposite adjacent, beside Kilimanjaro, you know, all those things. Not necessary. Why am I always calling Kilimanjaro? All right. Are we together? Let's move. Now, the next thing is what we call professional summary. Professional summary. Now, so this is what's in some cvs we have as objectives okay. you know all those <laughs> objectives you people used to write no more objectives now in this professional summary okay if i ask somebody a question let me look for who to ask this question where are the names here if i ask Ezinwa, right Ezinwa, if i ask you a question um can you tell me about yourself maybe you, you attended an interview <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Good evening. Yes, I can. Hello. Okay, God, sorry. Good evening. I have a cranky neck to talk where I am. Oh, okay, I think it was my network. You asked... I think it was my network that disappeared. Okay, okay ma. Okay, you asked me if I should just say a brief um, rundown about my... Yeah, so you attended an interview and the first question... So... Hello, Mac. Yeah. So you attended an interview, and the first question is, who are you? Or can we know you? Can we meet you? How are you going to respond to that question? Uh, just in summary, I think maybe the traditional way we used to do it is saying, um, saying OK, I think is not one's network is bad. Can somebody else try to respond to that question? Who else would like to respond to that question? Uh, 
Oh, so sorry. I really don't know what's going on. Uh, can anybody hear me? No, I can hear you. Okay, sorry. I don't know. I tried to change my network. Yeah, it's in why I don't know if you've answered the question, but I didn't hear. Okay, I was just saying it's in general. I think it entails, traditionally it entails saying your name, maybe your age, your academic qualification and any other job experience that, especially if it's um, the one um, the one that is um, related to the job in question. Okay. Did you say your age? Is age part of what you said? I, traditionally, I knew yeah, traditionally, I knew they used to include age, but I heard these days it's no longer included. But I'm just saying from my past experience. Okay. So from um, from past experience, we include a lot of things. You see people who say their name, they'll say their marital status, say the number of children they have, you know, they say all sorts. So that question, who are you? Can I know you? Can I meet you? Simply means, why should I employ you? So it is an it's it's an avenue for you to sell yourself, to market yourself, okay? And um, we have a lot of people that don't know where to start from. They don't know how to go about it. So I'm going to use, for example, a makeup artist. If I ask a makeup artist, for example, of their professional summary, it's going to be very difficult for that person because they don't think there is anything professional about, you know, what they do. They draw people powder, they draw eyebrow, you know, they do all that. But there's a professional summary for a makeup artist. There's a professional summary for a plumber, for a welder, for a carpenter. And thank God for charging. Okay, so let me just type professional summary. Now, artificial intelligence, which artificial intelligence, which ChatGPT is, is not a platform for us to do copy and paste. There are so many other AIs that would detect if you did copy and paste from a place like ChatGPT. They will detect and even tell you the source. So these um, apps are basically things to give you an idea of what to do. So doing copy and paste with something like this is totally wrong. So professional summary, for a makeup artist um, that will act jobs in Canada, let's say limit to four lines of an A4 paper. So these are just prompts, right? That you can use to, you know, ask ChatGPT. You can ask ChatGPT anything, basically. So let's go now and enter professional summary for a makeup artist. So now this is a professional summary. I am an experienced makeup artist with passion for enhancing natural beauty through creative and tailored cosmetic applications. Proficient in a wide range of makeup styles from bridal to editorial with keen eye for details. I am detailed to stay in current with industry trends and providing exceptional client experiences. I'm seeking opportunities in Canada to contribute artistic expertise and elevate beauty standards. If I had asked the makeup artist, tell me about yourself, they for not talk half of this thing. They couldn't mm. have. They couldn't have ever imagined it. That's the truth. But with this, you have an idea. Now we all have sense. We all are adults. It is for us to now copy this, put it in Microsoft Word, and, you know, edit it, change some English synonyms, antonyms, you know, change it and now make it your own. There are still so many um, websites that can also help you to do this. We have um, humanize.ai. Humanize.ai. We have the very common one, Quillboat. Quillboat. So I'm just going to show you how these paraphrasing tools work. I, I like to use Humanize now because Humanize has uh, gone past <laughs> it has it, it really converts the thing to, to humans. Uh, my internet seems to be pretty slow. So if you go to this um, website, quillboat.com, you just copy this, paste it there, and say paraphrase. And it's, it will paraphrase it for you. And even here in, on ChatGPT, you can even click this sign here. 
refresh and tell ChatGPT generate another one for me. Oh, Mrs. West has told us that ChatGPT can give us idea. You can refresh twenty times. ChatGPT will still give you fresh summary for your role. My internet seems to be slow. This is usually never slow. Oh, this is really slow. Oh no. So, okay, I think my internet is really slow. But you guys can still hear me, Abby. You guys can still yeah, hear me. Okay, so yes, we can. If it gets faster, I'm gonna come back to it. So let's assume. I don't yes. know. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So let's assume. Um, I had copied that. Did I even copy it? Yeah, I copied it. So always paste it in this. Yes, we can. If you're using Microsoft Word, always paste it. Okay, the internet is coming back up. Are you seeing is generating another, another professional summary for for me? The first one was experienced makeup artist. Now it's the same versatile and skilled makeup artist with a passion for enhancing natural beauty. So it can keep regenerating for you. And you, on the other hand, you can also paraphrase. Now, Quillbot is open here. If I paste that stuff I copied on Quillbot to the left-hand side and click paraphrase, all right? Quillbot is going to paraphrase it for you. Quillbot, Q-U-I-L-L-B-O-T. I'm going to put all those links somewhere underneath this video or on our group as well, okay? So this is Quillboat. From this Quillboat now, you can now come and decide to paraphrase some things, make it your own. Don't do copy and paste from an AI and put on your CV. Make it your own, but it gives you a very good skeletal, you know, um, foundation for you to now put the flesh on, on it, you know? So this is really cool. Once you're done with that, Let's assume we are finished doing all the editing and kini kini ko. Just kukuma, print and paste. Now you see how we came with this black background. If you copy directly from um from ChatGPT, it will come with this white background. But when you now paste it, when you paste it on this body, that's what I was trying to do here. When you paste it on this place, you put your prompt and copy it from here or cut it from here that background will no longer show. So that's the professional summary. I'm using large fonts because I want you guys to see it. So that's it. That's your professional summary. Edit it and make it your own. Sometimes you can say experience makeup artist. Now, I forgot to mention. Remember I said six seconds rule. Um, what am I speaking here? Six seconds rule, right? So there are things that the HR needs to see in six seconds to attract them, to attract them. So you add what we call, um, you add um, functions, you add numbers to your professional summary. So you can now say ex oh, experienced makeup artist with over or over with over five years. Five is metrics, numbers functions so this five years or 10 years you know canada now they said anything more than 10 years they're afraid to employ you so please stick to five, between five to seven years experience don't put plenty of experience and think it's an advantage too much experience now in canada is a problem all right so stick to five to seven years okay so you put numbers with over five years then achieve 100 percent success for, for the past you know Numbers, when you put 100%, five years, um, reduced uh, negative feedback by 32%. They'll be wondering, all these numbers, what do they mean? So they're, they're, if they say 32%, they'll be wondering, what did she do 32%? What did she do 100%? What has she done for five years? So these numbers, metrics and functions, have a way of attracting them to stay longer than six seconds on your CV. Are we together? Even if you ask Chad GPT, even if you ask Chad GPT, let me copy this same thing, this same professional summary yeah. for me. I'm going to copy the same thing we asked Chad GPT before. Then I now say add metrics and functions. Okay? Add metrics and functions. Even Chad GPT can help you create 
the ones that have made, are you seeing what it, it added for us? Results driven, function, result driven makeup artist with five plus years of experience. Set by 30% through personalized, personalized consultation. It has added those numbers that will make eyes pop. So make sure in your professional summary, you have all this percentage, five years, and that percentage is not only increase. You can increase client satisfaction. You can reduce client dissatisfaction. Do you understand? You can, you can increase and reduce. Increase and reduction are all metrics and functions that can make eyes pop in your professional summary. Are we together? Are we together? So this professional summary works yes, for everybody. If I put professional summary for a caregiver or for a truck driver, let me reduce how I talk about caregivers here. It's not only caregivers training. Truck driver, you'll be surprised. What, which kind of professional clinical truck driver get? You will be shocked. Eh? Experienced truck driver with a proven track record of over 100,000 accident-free miles. What? What? Check that out. It will pop. Skilled in efficient route planning, achieving a 15% reduction in delivery times. Are you seeing that? So whatever your skill is, man, you've got a professional summary. And this is now how you should be introducing yourself in interviews. Don't just say, uh, my name is John Cool. Uh, I've been driving. I've driven all those... Uh, uh, Reduce it, um, you see, uh, please speak it, speak it, and don't recite it. Make this your thing. After you have edited your professional summary, make it your thing. It's something you should say anywhere you go. Even when people see you, you're still in this Nigeria. People see you, I'm like, ah, it's, it's not makeup here, because they do. No, 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 it's not just makeup. I am a clinician. You know, just use professional something and, and scrap out their brain. That kind of thing. Professionalize everything. And that's the same thing you're going to use. Let me talk about this briefly. That's the same thing you're going to use on your social media pages. Instagram, Facebook. Our students know that some people have lost their jobs. They got certificate of sponsorship. They lost their jobs because of their Instagram page. You said you're a caregiver and you're, you're, you're twerking on Instagram. So on your Instagram page, you should appear this professional. You're a makeup artist, but your DP on your Instagram page, you don't even have makeup on your face. So you should be that person. You say you're a truck driver, but when we go to your, your Instagram page or LinkedIn profile, what we are seeing is that you're an accountant where you work. These people are watching. As long as you have given out your full name, you've given out your phone number, you've given out your email address, my dear, they can find you anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. When we had Finland opportunity for those in Benin, it was moving smoothly until somebody, she didn't even know that she had NSAS on her page. When was NSAS? God knows how long it was. These people traced it and they banned her from that application. So your social media pages should be as professional as this CV you're drafting because they will find you. Nigeria is a red list country or high zone risk, whatever they call us. They will do background check on you, especially if you're getting these jobs for free. Are we there? Let's go back. Let's not go off so much. Any question about professional summary? So that we can go to yes. the third. Any questions? Yes, <laughs> yes go ahead. Was that a question? I didn't hear. No, no, no. I wanted okay. to screenshot. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, victory. Yes, there's a question. Go ahead. All right, good evening. Thank question. you so much. Can I continue, please? Who is speaking now? Victory. Yeah, victory, please. Go good ahead. evening. Good evening. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Please, I want to confirm. Do I need to also change the professional summary for every job I'm applying for? Then my CV need to be tailored to the job. See, yeah. Tailoring your okay, let me look for one job or would that take our time um job description can be really massive some people are very nice two three four bullet points some job description can be massive you can always hide those keywords in different sections of this your cv some keywords you can put it as a title under here if they say they are looking for okay you you're a caregiver 
and care assistants. You know, in Canada, they don't call them these names. They call them home care aid, home support worker. You will now change this caregiver and put home care aid. All of them mean the same thing. But in Canada, they're not looking for care assistants. I don't know if you understand. So they have already said they are looking for home care aid. And you, your own title is already saying caregiver. You will come and change this one. So if there are 10 keywords, you have put one keyword on that title. Inside professional summary, they might say they are looking for somebody with a um, tailored cosmetic application. Find it as a sentence somewhere. So you cannot put all the keywords in one section. Like the next session we're going to do now is called core skills and competence. You can't carry all their keywords and put there. They will suspect you. So you will scatter the keywords across the different parts of the CV. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying, Victory. Okay? You have to scatter it. So if, Very well. a, so if there's a sentence that you feel uh, will enter your professional summary that is also in their job description, copy it and put. So when we say tailoring your CV, you follow everywhere. They are looking for home care aid and you are tied to the same caregiver. You would delete that caregiver and put home care aid, put home care assistance, use their own terms. Because we know that home care aid, home care assistance is the same thing with care assistance and caregiver. In fact, some people even call it nursing aid. You understand? Although nursing aid is like a certified nursing assistant, but you can tailor every part of the CV. Every part of the CV can be tailored. I think what there was one more question. Sense. Okay, thank you. There was one yeah, more question. Thanks. Um, who was that? Let me check. Uh, Maureen, was it you? There was one more person had a question. Unmute yourself if you're the one. Otherwise, we proceed. Okay, okay. yes, please. I want to ask if, if the person applying for the job is applying for this job for the first time and you're expected to put all these, um, um, your experience over the years, what do you do? Do you just keep it? What do you mean by if you're applying for the job for the first time? You mean when the person has not had experience? Like, your, yes, yes. My dear, you have experience, so <laughs> you must have experience. So now, let me use caregiver as an example, okay? Um, as a caregiver, like me, professionally, I've been a caregiver professionally. I've been a caregiver for less than three years. But I have been doing care for more than 10 years. I had a cousin who had an accident. Whenever it's long vacation, the whole family goes there. I care for her. I help her stand up from the wheelchair, lie down, empty her urine bags. I do all that. That's family care. So if I want to put my level of experience in care, I'm not going to put three years. No. I'm going to put 10 years or seven plus years, because there are a few 10 years now, seven plus years. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we cannot now kill the small, small things we've been doing. Now, this is my best way of explaining this sometimes. There are so many things that we are that we do not know. For example, a wife, a wife, somebody that has a husband, people will just, for that wife, she will say, I'm just a wife. But that wife is not just a wife. Oh. That wife is a mother. That wife is a sister. That wife is a sister-in-law. That wife is an auntie. That wife is a cousin. So there are so many things that you are that we have not really put definition around it. That's why you say you don't have work experience. So any which way, my dear, find work experience. Because if you don't have work experience, your chances of getting the job is really minimal. Now, answering this question from another angle, most of us want to go and do the work because they say it's caregivers they are employing. All of us will not want to be caregivers. My dear, it is not true. That thing you studied in school, that thing you have been doing for the past 10 years, there's somebody somewhere looking for you with that skill that you have. Yes. So we don't all have to run to become caregivers. Now, caregiving is an advantage because it is in, it is in high demand right now. So it is a good entry route. I tell people, use it and enter. But don't use it and remain. Don't use it and remain. Because who you are, I have trained accountants as caregivers. I have trained architects as caregivers. I have trained pharmacists as caregivers. I'm like, do you think um, caregivers earn more than a pharmacist? That's a big lie. As a pharmacist, you would do better anywhere in the world. 
So use caregiving and enter because, of course, you not pay surcharge. So There's so many things you will not pay. But when you enter, go and become that thing that you are. We'll get into that. So, my dear, you have to look for experience somehow. But if you don't have experience, go and look for the job. Gain the experience. Volunteer somewhere. Do internship somewhere. Sha sha gain that experience. And also add your personal experience. Professionalize that your personal experience. Let's proceed so that we don't um, stay too long here. Uh, ah, we have stayed almost an hour. So, the next is what we call core skills and competences. Remember, this numbering is not supposed to be there. Or anyway, maybe what I'm going to do is post a draft on the group when we are done so that you guys will see what it looks like. Right? But please change your template. So everybody's not going to use that template. Change your template. Put line, put boxes. Change your template. Why am I saying this? I'm going to be sending links of jobs on the group. So if 20 people from this group apply for one job using the same CV sample, or all, all the 20 of you, they don't mark Kuna Exo. They'll know if I'm coming from somewhere. So please, in as much as I'm, I'm putting a template on the group, change, change. I don't know if you understand what I mean by change the template. May the Lord give you people wisdom. I don't want to explain too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I understand, bro. <laughs> okay. Core skills and competence. This is where you list out your skills. Please, can somebody here tell me one, where, who are you? I like, why am I speaking this English this night like this? What are you? Are you a makeup artist? You're an accountant? Somebody tell me your role. The role you play right now. Please, nobody should say caregiver here. I know my caregivers are plenty in the house. Somebody tell me, are you an architect, engineer? Just tell me. Somebody tell me your 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 profession. An accountant. An accountant. Beautiful. As an accountant, please tell me like five skills that you have as an accountant. What are the skills that you have as an accountant? What are the skills you have that made them employ you as an accountant? Okay. Thank you. Lola, we can't hear you in case you're speaking. What are the skills? Or can somebody else answer that question? Tell me your area, your profession, and five skills of your area. Uh, uh -huh. uh -huh. Go ahead. Financialist is um receivables and um invent I'm sorry, receivables and payables management. Um, okay. stock taking auditing. Auditing, excellent. Yeah. So now let's say. Let's now ask a GPT. 10 core skills of an accountant. That can attract a job in the United in, how do you spell kingdom? Kingdom. All right, let's see. Good. You mentioned audit. Beautiful. I mentioned 10. If you don't tell ChatGPT 10, it will give you 100. Now you go tire. Financial reporting, audit and assurance, taxation knowledge, budgeting and forecasting, management, accounting, IT proficiency, risk management, communication skills, analytical thinking. Now you carry all these things as bullet points. Especially when the job description did not tell you what exactly they are looking out for. So all those English show oh, analytical, minini, minini, create bullet points. That way you're not talking story. Just waiting they talk again. Budgeting, you know, all those other English. Maybe put five bullet points to the left, five bullet points to the right. Now remember, ATS, keywords. If there are some things they say they are looking for in their keyword, this is also an opportunity to carry like three, four, five keywords and put here. They are looking for somebody that has good documentation skills. Adam here. Use their word, good documentation skills. You get put all those skills. These are bullet points. And stick to 10. Let's not be too much. Five to the left, five to the right. 
I don't know if you guys understand what I'm saying. One more person, give me your area. Let's search for your own uh, core skills. For caregivers, you all know your core skills already. Excellent communication skills, um, documentation skills, driving skills, um, helping with, what do they call them? Oh, this break has congealed somebody's head, head do ADL, help activities of daily living, um, CPR, first aid skills, etc. You know, you will now be wondering what are the core skills of somebody like a makeup artist? You will be shocked. 10 core skills. Let me not use makeup artist of a welder. So whosoever you are, whichever CV you want to draft, man, you've got skills. 10 core skills of a welder. Welding techniques, blueprint, blueprint reading, metal fabrication is still coming up. One minute, please. Thank God. How far now? Did you get? Oh, no. Okay. Okay, so we see that, right? Teamwork, problem solving. So there is no area, there is no niche, there is no industry that Chajip doesn't have a solution for. So this is the easiest part. One minute, please. This is the easiest part. Just take the points like that and put it there. Maybe collect five from GPT, then collect five from job description of what they are looking for. If what they are looking for is not there, leave them and go to the next. Any question? Are we learning? Are we learning? Any question? This one, there's nothing to paraphrase. Documentation. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. There's nothing to paraphrase. Documentation skill is documentation skills. Nothing to paraphrase. Copy it like that and paste it. End of story. All right? So the next thing we have now is work experience. Now, for those that say they don't have experience, this is where you have to use the wisdom from above <laughs> to help you. Now, work experience, starting from your current place of work. So you're going to put the the work you're doing let's say care assistant then underneath it you put the name of the place you're working shakti and sense whatever then you now put the year when you have been working remember if you said five years experience let your five years experience show in what you're doing here or most people will say till date they are still working now, and after you have written your title and the place you worked, then underneath it, you now have bullet points of the things you were doing when you were working there. Another opportunity for you to use keywords. Keywords. Now, how do you know? Because some of us, the work we do, if I say, interpret your work professionally, for example, a storekeeper, a storekeeper will say things like, I make sure nothing is missing in the store. I keep stock of everything. When I resume work, I count. Before I close, I count. That's local, local way of expressing your, the job you're doing. Do you count when you resume work? Yes. Do you count when you close? Yes. But is that really how to say it? No. So most of us, we know the job we do, but we do not know how to say it professionally. We come back to our Obonge, ChatGPT. So you now ask ChatGPT job roles of a carpenter. So I'm using different job roles so that people will not say that uh, this uh, boot camp is tailored to one angle of people. Ev everybody is covered. Job roles of a carpenter, for example. Now you'll be wondering how can we create job roles. In fact, you can also add job roles of a carpenter, adding matrix and functions so that it can also give you you know all those numbers so after you have written the name i'm a carpenter underneath working in c and c carpentry um factory or whatever underneath as bullet points you don't need to now put this construction farming you now say building and installing frameworks or structures you mustn't put such as walls and floor 
You understand? Building and installing frameworks or structures using wood or other materials. Crafting and installing cabinets, shelves, and other. Now, these are the job roles you're going to put. Not that you copy it and paste. This will give you an idea. What do I build? Do I really build and install frameworks? But there's something you build and install. So I build and install beautiful shelves, kitchen shelves. So ChatGPT just gives you an idea on how to now generate your own. There are plenty. No stop here. Repairing and restoring wooden structures. Of course, all carpenters do that. You can use revamping wooden furnitures, you know, these are now copy like five, six, or seven of it and put on the needs. That's your work description. So after you have put the first work, you worked in CNC um, carpentry framework from 20, uh, 2020 20 to 2024. 20 then you, the next one again, you put John Cool carpentry from this to this. I was also what a supervisor or a carpentry supervisor. You now put another bullet point underneath it. Constructing and repairing of roofs, including installing roofs, was that rafters, shingles, whatever it is. Do you understand? So you copy these things, edit it, and make it sound like what you are familiar with. So there is nobody that is not in any industry that you will not see something that resonates with what you're already doing. So if I say, uh, if I say jo job roles of an accountant, for example. Let me go a little bit professional. Job roles of an accountant add metrics and functions. Okay, so I'm just giving you examples of the um, prompts you should be using for your search. Okay, timely and accurate preparation of financial statements ensuring compliance with regulatory standard. Okay, successfully managed. So this will just give you an idea you will now know how to now put it together. ChatGPT is still generate. You never tire. So that's what comes under your work experience. So it's basically your title, the place you worked, the dates before and when you left, then job roles, the things you are doing in that work. When you finish with the first experience, you can put the second experience and the third experience. Please don't put more than three work experience. Three is perfect because no matter what you do, your CV should not be more than two pages. UK, your CV should not be more than two pages. Some people in Canada, they even manage, they try to get to three, but to be safe, two pages. Some people, they would mention it in your in the um the job adverts and say one page. And imagine a one page CV. So you cannot come and be putting more than one experience. So depending on what they want, one page or two pages, that's the standard. That's the standard. That's for work experience. Any questions? Any question? Any question? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. My question is this. Um, I for a, a job fair in Canada. Uh, the link was given to me by a friend. And he told me to just make up things on my CV like this caregiver thing is and all that. And even uh, uh, I cooked up where I worked and stuff like that. So now my question is, if I'm to apply for this Prince Edward Island thing, and my CV was really, really today. If I'm to revamp my CV and apply to Prince Edward and remove those things, like those experiences and all that, will it really affects me since it's the same Canada, but different provinces. That's what I want to ask. So your question is whether the provinces will share your CV among themselves? Yes. <laughs> no, no, they will not. So unless you're applying to the same person. But me, eh, I'm always of the opinion that when we are lying, let us lie lie that we can defend. Do you understand? When we are lying. Yes, ma'am. Light, light that we can defend so it doesn't clash tomorrow. What if you now make things up and you now get the job? I know people will say any which I will learn them, but somehow when they call you for interview, are you ready for it? So if you make things up, make sure you can back it up. So, like I said yesterday, make things up, then go back to Alison and study. 
and study. There is nobody that will interview me for any caregiver job that after two minutes, they are not begging me to come over. Study to, to show yourself approved. So it's okay to make things up as long as you can pack it up. But if, if it's about sharing uh, profiles, I don't think that's possible. It's just a CV. And they know that people tailor CV to jobs. It's not a crime to tailor your CVs to meet a job. No, it's not a crime. So it's okay to do that. Thank you very much. Yes. I have to round up this meeting really quick. I really don't know what's going on with my laptop. So I have to round up really quick. So the next, the fifth is, um, sorry, one minute. Okay. So the fifth is education and certification. Education and certifications, okay? So this is usually a case for some people because uh, you're applying for caregiver. Meanwhile, you're an architect. You have BSc in engineering. So they really don't know how to go about this. Now, remember yesterday I said, do a lot of courses. So those courses that you did comes first. Do not ever forget the six second rule. They don't want to be employing a, a caregiver and they are seeing bachelors in, a, in engineering. They don't, they, they don't want to see that. So it shouldn't come first. So if you have done three, four, five courses, certification in care or in whatever, if you want to be a truck driver, do one thing, one thing, um, truck driver in training with, um, with uh, Coast Charis Motors, truck driver in training with, uh, uh, what are the name of these other people that do it big time in Calabar? Um, what's their name? Oh, ah, God. Lafarge. Lafarge has a very amazing truck driving school in Calabar. So you now say truck driver in training with Lafarge. So you include those are like certifications. You put that one first. Then if you have done any course on Allison, you put it truck driving, Allison, mini, 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 mini. So you put so all those things should come first. Truck driving. Let me just show you an example. I may not have time to list these things out. I think I should have a CV here. Beautiful. So now look at this education and certifications. Healthcare assistant from Paradigm Care 2023. Basic first aid certificate 2022. First aid and CPR CV Life 2022. List all those things. So from here and above are online certifications. If you have 10, put it there. American Care Standard. In fact, this one has even been updated. There are more before see my BSc in Applied Information Technology. That's the one I put last. Some people that their CV is not yet full, you can put the name of the school, no problem. You understand? You can put the name of the school where you got the certifications from, but list the ones that are relevant to this CV before the ones that are not relevant. There's nothing BSc Applied Information Technology that has to do with what we're talking about here. So list it out and put the year. You can choose to put the name of the institution. You can choose not to put the name of the institution. If the first four are just courses i saw the name online i have not done the course put it there and put 2024 then go back and start studying because some of these things have expiration dates you need to be applying but as you're applying you're studying because whether you finish it this month or finish it next month is 2024 so you can put diploma in nursing allison has a diploma in nursing diploma in nursing diploma in care put 2024 and go and start reading you have put it on your cv you have told them you have the certification so you put it there, you can start studying. Do you understand? So this is how you just list out your educational certifications and it's okay to put the name of the institution. Now, before your reference, there's what we call additional information. Remember I said there are seven spots, but one is optional. That additional information is optional. You can choose to put it, you can choose not to put it. So additional information are things that you have that is not under education. It's not on that job experience. It's not on that core skills. Okay, sorry, everybody. We have to round up. Yes, sir. Please. I was talking about additional information. Let me just round up, okay? This, then I'm not take general questions because this computer might go up anytime soon. So additional information can be, you know, those that said I have international driver's license, you put it there. I have my TB certification, my police character report. I have awards. I have I've been nominated. These, you know, 
all those other achievements that you have that is not under education and situation, you can put this under additional information before you now put your reference or your referee, you know, their names, their email address, and try as much as possible that their email address are not at Gmail and at Yahoo, et cetera, et cetera. So yes, now we can take questions. I'm going to post something close to this on the group and like i said don't use this template where there's line 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 in between some people can use something else you know put it to the left and to the right just change it so that it does not look alike especially when we have to apply to the same jobs okay so that brings us to the end of the class i can take questions now let me stop the recording then take questions go ahead with your questions okay.